Let's use this terrible economic crisis to question assumptions behind economic theory and to rethink the role of the state, finance, and austerity in promoting growth and innovation. So we are here today at Brazil's uh, development bank, BNDS, with João Ferraz, the vice president. And João, I have a question for you. Now, BNDS, on the one hand, is providing this very strong, active role in Brazil's industrial policy to actually help facilitate finance, especially in the high-risk areas. At the same time, it then gets accused of crowding out private finance. What's behind all this accusation and this debate? Uh, I, I think the, uh, the, the, the notion of crowding out in Brazil is being a bit passé. Uh, what uh, the people that is really concerned with Brazilian long-term development and, uh, and this is not only government officials, but analysts and even investors, especially investors on the long term, they are talking more about crowding in. Mm. Uh, Brazil has reached a level where the uh, finance industry has reached a very sophisticated level, but still they, they, they only operate on the short term. Right. Uh, on the other hand, uh, Benny Diaz has six years of experience in operating with a diverse uh, range of instruments of financing the long term. Um, and sorry, is this both in a recessionary period like today, for example, when um, companies don't have enough credit? So I saw, for example, that the level of disbursements since the crisis, since mm. 2007, have increased immensely from BNDS, whereas private finance has reduced. Yeah. But is it also true in the boom period? that you don't have enough long-term finance? Or is this just a business cycle problem? No, I, uh, the, the, it's in the long term, I, and I'll go for the short term. On the long term, so the, the moment that Brazil now is that has a finance industry that is sophisticated but short term, one. That Brazil has been in the ass with six years experience, two. And the other component on the macro level where the interest rates are below a magic number below 10%. Uh, if they stay below 10% in a sort of uh, a long period, it is um, almost a process that happened, almost immediate process that happened in different countries in Latin America, that the, the private industry will start to originate longer term operations. Mm. So they will be interested uh, given the interest rate, they will be interested in finance, start to finance long term. Okay. But the, the question is, the finance is, a, is, is an instrument, yeah? it's a mean. The, 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 the key question being whether the investment frontier uh, is significant or not. And our evaluation is that uh, the investment frontier in this country, uh, for different reasons, uh, from the export uh, where we are competitive, especially the commodities, the agro and the minerals, is still going to be, there is a long-term trend mm -hmm. uh, that is positive one. The other one is that uh, the, because of the inclusion policies of government, the uh, internal market is affluent, and there is this emerging middle class. So this constitutes 200 million people that uh, you know, a, a lot of people is increasing access to goods and service. The other one, housing. Mm. The credit for housing in this country, which has been increasing at 30% a year, it is still at 7% of, of GDP, which is mm. ridiculous. So the needs for housing. And the other one is infrastructure, the logistics, energy. So you have four sources of dynamism. And each one of them have very interesting investment uh, prospects. So this will call for, uh, for a very sophisticated industry financing, being from uh, money from abroad, uh, from BNDES, from the private industry. Mm -hmm. So uh, the size of the, of the investment uh, frontier is so big that BNDES alone cannot do. Right. So it is time, the macro conditions, the maturity of the, so there will be a process of crowding in, and this is what we are going to see in the next three, four, five years. Going to your, uh, uh, the role of uh, public banks and the uh, cycle. 
what we see in Brazil is uh, since 2006, 7 investment started to grow ahead of GDP and there was an increase in demand for BNDES. So BNDES increased uh, the operations. We have assets of around 300 uh, billion mm -hmm. uh, US, uh, roughly uh, 330. Uh, and uh, disbursement last year of just around between 75 and 80 billion uh, in terms of loan disbursement. So then it is, is, is quite large, sophisticated. It's not as, as large as KFW or the China Development Bank. In terms of um, the participation in the economy, uh, you know, the credit to GDP, we are comparable mm. with these institutions. So each one has a size. Uh, that and the is return on equity is much higher, no? Return on equity is higher, yeah, but this is because BNDES has an investment. One of the su our subsidiaries is BNDES Par, is uh, an investment bank mm -hmm. type that uh, has a nice portfolio uh, that provides a large part of our return. So because we, are, we have not only economies of scale, but we also scope, mm. operate ex exiting project finance, uh, venture capital. Yeah. But now, going back to the uh, cycle, so BNDES started to increase since 2006 7 in terms of operation. Came the crisis. Uh, then you see that the investment goes down sharply. And at this moment, there was a decision, a political decision, to increase uh, the role of BNDES, in, including uh, doing uh, uh, working capital that usually we don't do. So we step in mm -hmm. when the banks, rather than market share, started to be concerned with the basic indices. Yeah. So they did that. And it's normal. Now, w it, what is very important is that w once the banks came back, BNDES mm. retrieved. So we came out of the working capital. So if you see the curves of Brazil, it go, the investment goes like that, BNDES yeah. Uh, goes more active yeah. and then it slows down. And the same, this is 2008, 2009. So the same thing is happening now. So 2012 was very bad. Uh, in it's, uh, the data just came out. Uh, there was uh, a very sharp decrease in investment in the economy. The economy grew 0.9 and investment minus 4. Mm. So in last year, Benny Dad, what? Okay. So it plays Enter a very again. strong counter cyclical. Yes. Uh, so it, but the, the counter cyclical, what is important, and one of the criticisms is that uh, once you are in, you are never out. Yeah. The performance of BNDES shows that once the economy is stabilized, once the finance is stabilized, the financing industry, then BNDES yeah. knows how to retrieve. Yeah. So the synthesis here is looking at the crisis, Mariana, is that uh, if you see, and, and this is not only in, Beni, uh, in, in Brazil. Every place that there is a uh, development bank, and many countries have, you know, Germany, China, mm -hmm. uh, Ecuador, mm -hmm. uh, every, when there was a crisis, there was a, a, a greater role for a public bank. So our evaluation is that um, a stronger uh, industrial configuration in the finance industry is where you have the private and the public. Yeah. You cannot have sure, one. but also that they're very different actors. So the public bank is providing long-term, committed, patient finance, which is also countercyclical. And I think what's very important, which you mentioned, is that the crowding in occurs for different reasons. And one of the reasons, perhaps, that's not highlighted enough is that the particular areas also where BNDS decides to invest are precisely those that are very high risk, which risk-averse banks and even venture capital yes. are too scared to fund. So clean technology today. Pharmace you know, certain parts of the pharmaceutical and the biotech industry don't have enough financing, especially in the Death Valley area. And I know that BNDS is thinking very concretely about things like financing, you know, through a bond, that, perhaps. Yes. No, on that level, yes. No, uh, this is another. But then you're accused no. of being too active, precisely because you're intelligently uh, thinking about the space. No, but this is another dimension, uh, uh, which is related to where a development bank uh, should be. Mm. Uh, and uh, there is no doubt that in areas where, it's not failure now, where there is, you know, they do not exist, mm. uh, that it's the role of public uh, banks. So in the high risk 
or even the, on the very long term, yeah. Yeah, long maturity. Sure. So these are uh, areas where public banks will be. Mm -hmm. uh, but, and, and I think that you have written about these things, but uh, you know, um, we have to be there. Yeah, so we are designing, you know, like you mentioned, uh, instruments, risk instruments that could take that, uh, you know, the Death Valley part mm -hmm. uh, where we uh, would share the risk but also share the rewards, rewards if they exactly. come. Uh, so what we see is that uh, uh, BNDES is, is a, a public bank, 100% uh, uh, it belongs to the uh, to the Brazilian state, to the Brazilian society. Uh, I'm, I will stress a bit your arguments in terms of the risk and reward mm -hmm. in the sense that uh, it is necessary for a development bank to be efficient and to provide adequate returns to its sh major shareholders, to the society. So we, um, not only on the, on the risk side, but we have to, every operation, uh, being where we provide access for a micro small when we design a credit card, mm -hmm. that has a, a, a good rate of return for us. It's lower than the market rate for, for a credit card. But on these credit cards, the uh, micro business can buy supplies, equipment for its business, it's not mm -hmm. for consumption. Uh, we have an adequate return there, which uh, it's lower than what the market would mm. do, but provides an adequate return for us, uh, which will be, you know, the uh, National Treasury is always happy mm. uh, with the returns that we provide. So, uh, and, and besides, you know, it provides access yeah. uh, for, uh, uh, in which is the drama and the challenge for micro firms. So, I, my point is that, uh, uh, we have to uh, to be efficient uh, because we have to provide returns for for our shareholders. Sure. Yeah, but also as an instrument, as an instrument that seems one that actually very concretely, at least potentially, achieves what the European Union, for example, talks about a lot, which is smart growth, which is also inclusive growth. So you are smartly investing in certain areas, but then the returns do, in fact, go back to the economy, something right. like 80%, not go back to the Treasury, which can, in theory, yeah, the treasury, the, the Treasury, yeah. uh, you know, compared to the private uh, shareholders, our national Treasury is, uh, you know, very... Uh, tricky? Not <laughs> tricky, no, 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 in the, uh, no, they, uh, uh, they, 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 they know how to call back yes. their dividends. Well, you they know, know the usefulness <laughs> of such a bank. And, yes. And, yes. Yeah. Okay, but well, this has been very interesting, thank you, because currently, as we know, you know, there is not a very objective discussion of development banks. It tends to, unfortunately, get caught up in some ideological yeah. battles, and it's very important, I think, to really reopen up, re-engage with the importance of development banks and providing exactly the kind of things which private finance does not provide, and hence crowding in, and I would say dynamizing in. Good. Crowding in, in a way, is always referring to the negative. Yeah, it's true, out. We need true. a new word, no? Yeah, yeah. We dynamize yeah. in uh, private yeah. finance and allow things to happen that otherwise would not have. Yeah, no, especially because uh, we are means now, so we have to see uh, and we have to support the uh, development agenda, no? so. Yeah. We are an instrument. Okay, Zhao, well, I know you're All very right. busy. Thank you so much well, for spending time with us, and I uh, hope to see you again soon. All right. East Asian case in, in a minute, but before I get on to East Asia, th there's one basic and really important background point um, I want to make that I think both the, um, the orthodox narrative and the heterodox narrative miss, and that basic point is that the historical record shows that economic development... In essence, I think the key here, here is to, to, to see that the, that the state is in many ways complementing, and that is the key role of the state, is to complement the private sector. And this is also in many ways in the positive aspects, to lead, to show the new ways in a way, if you will, but also in negative aspects.